Before I provide some background on you, Chris, I would like to thank you for taking the time to do this on uh, Hoops and Dreams QPR podcast. Thanks very much for, for being here. Um, I've got your, in fact, you can, you can correct me if I've got any bits on your background wrong, of course. I've got you down as age 24, born in Waltham Forest, um, and you've got two brothers, Matty and Joe, both of whom play football too. And uh, bizarrely, in 2017, for the only time, I think, in your combined professional careers, uh, when Manchester United reserves played Arsenal reserves, all three of you appeared on the same pitch. Yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> that must have been pretty weird. Um, Matty is now at um, Salford United, I think. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Joe is now playing for Newcastle. And uh, coming back to your own career, you worked your way up the England sides from the under 16s, under 17s, under 18s, under 19s, under 20s, um, having signed for Arsenal in 2003 at the tender age of five. Did that seem a bit weird at the age of five, being uh, suddenly with Arsenal? Um, yeah, very weird. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say... Uh... A little bit. I feel like this is something that I've always played football since I was young, since I could walk. So um, for me, it was just a normal thing. I didn't see the, you know, wouldn't say hype, but I didn't see the how much of a big achievement it was at the time um, playing for Arsenal at five. So I was in a way. I'm not surprised. Being a five year old, yeah. you don't care much about football. Exactly. Just football, isn't it? Exactly. All I wanted to do is play football, and that's what I was doing so. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, you, you you progressed through the Arsenal Academy until you left for Benfica in 2017, I think, um, with your last year, last year there being 2020 when you were loaned out to Huddersfield, Huddersfield and West Brom. Mm. Uh, and then the same year you joined us. Um, and since then, you've appeared over I think, 89 times, maybe 90 times now, I think it is, scoring 16 goals and providing 17 assists. Um so, are you happy with your career to date? Do you think, Chris? Um, Any regrets? No, I, I look at life and especially my career. Is, it's all a journey, and I think going on a journey. I'm still on the journey, and um, obviously enjoying my time here. And um, I think for me, the most important thing is as long as I'm enjoying my football and I'm I'm working hard. That's the main thing, and that's the main focus for me. Hey, that's a good enough reason, I think. Yeah, good way to good ethos, I think. Um, I know you've got to tread very carefully when discussing managers, so I so I will only ask: um, How easy has it been to adapt your play to that of a new manager? Sorry. Uh, okay. How easy has it been to adapt your play to that of a new manager? Um, I feel like um, nowadays a lot of the managers um, are kind of. Similar, I think there's only small tweaks. I think we're fortunate enough now in the modern game game to have loads of top top managers, and they all have different ideas. But um, I feel like I'm getting on fine with um. There's been a few changes, and I'm and I'm adapting good. Okay, without naming names, in the past, have there, has there ever been any managers or coaches? Who they've come in with a different different style and whatever, and you thought, no, I can't, I can't get on with this. Is there anyone, or has it always been easy? Um, I wouldn't say it's always been easy. Um, obviously, everyone has different ideas in football, and everyone has different opinions. It's a game of opinions, but um, I wouldn't say I found it completely difficult. Um, I feel like I'm I'm lucky to have a, a good background behind me, and. Um, I've obviously explored different um, ideas as well as going out to Portugal and being up north and obviously being here. So um, there's, there's small differences, but I wouldn't say I've really found it difficult in in any such way where um, it's it's put my performance at risk or or anything like that, really. Oh, that's good. That's all right. Um, we asked the, the Hoops and Dreams um, subscribers uh, if they had any questions for you, and you'll be surprised to find there were a few. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Noah Hoop, everybody comes under a pseudonym, so you'll have to just get used to this. Um, he asked, what do you like to do on your day off? I'm quite a chilled person, so I like to um, chill at home, oh. a bit of Netflix, really. No golf? 
Pardon? No golf? I'm not really a golf person, but I want to get into it. I think if you're the Lance Air player, and I'm always like, um, I want to get into it. So I think <laughs> later down the line, I'm going to get into it. Maybe, you know, when I have kids and stuff. <laughs> I'm just take my mind off things. But yeah, I, just, <laughs> I like to chill at home, really, and just relax. Hey, that's good enough. I, I can I can live with that. Um, Northwest Hoop asked, um, which shirt number do you prefer, 21 or 7? Um, I think I'll have to say seven. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, that's good enough. That's probably like my preferred one of my preferred numbers. Um, obviously twenty one. I started doing twenty one, so you know. Yeah, I thought I thought that maybe <laughs> I thought maybe twenty one might be a multiple of seven for some reason. Anyway. Yeah, I, that was at the start. It was. <laughs> yeah. So okay, I'll, I'll it, I'm, someone else has got number seven, so I'll take that. <laughs> ah, well, okay. Uh, numbers are number at the end of the day, and I feel like you make you make the number that how you play makes the number. So I know I'm happy anyway. Yeah. Um. Another one from him. Uh. Was it hard watching the team fall away last season, knowing that you the difference, knowing the difference you could have made if you were able? Of course. Um. Obviously, you don't you don't want to see your teammates um lose. And um, it was difficult because obviously I always want to play every game and uh, to see see us lose and to see that we just come up short. Um, it was quite disappointing, but um, I'm sure we've learned from this and as a team, we can build. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I'm always amazed at how uh, players seem to be able to bounce back from, from uh, what seems to me to be pretty hard uh, defeats and whatever. Uh, I'm always impressed that you can manage to do it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, do you worry about injuries returning at all? You know, such as your recent hamstring injury, or, or is it something you just ignore? Um, to be fair, to be completely honest, I found it um, difficult at the start because um, that was my last. My first injury last season was my first like real big injury. I didn't really have any knowledge or any. It just came at a random time, so it was hard. But I feel like now I've adapted to it. I've um, learned how to to manage it properly. Um, to know that um, I don't want this to happen again. So I have to do the right things in the gym, which I've been doing. Um, the right rehab sessions and the right, the right eating the right foods and eating the right things that would help my body, taking vitamins and taking tablets that would only benefit me and what would be beneficial for me. So I've learned over the time to to really um to focus on that aspect of it and to to make sure I try my hardest that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh right. <laughs> okay, single speed asks which football team do you mo do most of your family follow? Um, <laughs> I'll say obviously Newcastle or QPR. Um, we grew up short in Arsenal to be fair, but um, it's a bit difficult now to keep up with all the games because they're normally playing when we're playing, or if I'm not playing, I'm gonna watch my brother's game. So, ah, okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, Single Speed also asked if you could only choose one player to go out to go out, sorry, to go out with for a drink. Uh, from the, the, these three, which one would you choose? And he's got Thierry, Thierry Henry, David Beckham, or Michael Owen? Uh, Thierry Henry, just because I feel like um, he helped me a lot in my career already. So um, when I was a youth team player, he was like our assistant coach. So I'm kind of familiar with him already. So I think I'll pick Thierry <laughs> Fair enough. Um, next one. Now you're going to have to rely on your memory, and I'm hoping it's far better than mine, Chris, um, because I, I'm going to ask you to cast your mind back to the match at Loftus Road against uh, Middlesbrough in August. Uh, yeah. for the next question. Um, Stoti asks, the goal against Borough was brilliant that you scored. Have you ever scored a better one? Um, I'll say not at first team level, maybe not. Um, Maybe people could argue that maybe the Birmingham goal was maybe better. But um, for me, I think that's probably one of my favourite goals to up to now that I've scored. 
in the first team environment. So yeah, it was really, I was really pleased when I scored that goal. I would hope so. Um, yeah, incidentally, Jim Jams, uh, another one of our contributors, uh, asked, he wondered, actually wondered how the hell you'd scored that goal. I mean, was it instinctive or or whatever? I mean, how how did it sort of come about? You were just a long way out. Did you just feel the opportunity was there? Uh, I tried to play f- football without thinking anyway. So um, ah. I just tried to play free as much as I can. And I feel like at, the, at that time, that's what happened. So I feel like, I wouldn't say it's a lot, but I feel like that's just part of the game. And um being confident enough to take the ball forward and um, take on the shot, that is a skill in itself. So um, I was just delighted when it went in. <laughs> Not just you. <laughs> OK, Stoti also asked, uh, when you got the torn hamstring and you knew you'd be out for a long time, um, oh. what is the process you, you you go through to get back to fitness? Is it something you have to do with members of the QPR medical team only, or does the process allow you to maintain contact with the rest of the first team squad? Um, well, it's a bit of both, really. I feel like I had surgery, so I had to um, stay at home for a bit. But after that, you recover, you get to come in, and which is nice, you get to see your teammates, and everyone's really supportive. Um, you speak to players that uh, it's happened, and you realise it's not just me that's gone through this, and <laughs> I've gone through this. So you get advice from other players and you get to see them. Of course, you're not on the same schedule, but you see them around the place and um, you see them going out to train and stuff. And as things slowly get better, you start to come back on the pitch and um, you start to you get integrated slowly into the training sessions. And I feel like the first day you're back, it's just, you know, it's like... Pretty like good. ...into heaven. So <laughs> it's just it's a slow process, but it's uh, you see the... Um, the improvements every day in your body, working with the staff here, and um, yeah, just it's good. I think I think what they do is actually fantastic, and it's often uh, the unsung side of it all, isn't it? Yeah, you know, medical yeah. team do. Okay, um, is there any competition between you and your brothers regarding who scores the most goals each season? Uh, yeah, it normally is. To be fair, oh, yeah. oh right. We haven't spoke much this season about it, but um, I'm in the lead, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, normally we do, like, whoever scores the most goals, that has to take some of them, um, all of us out to dinner or, or something along them lines. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. We always, like, have little jokes about, like, you need to get your goals up, mate, and stuff like that. So it's always good banner, but it's always um in the sense of, encouraging each other you know to do the, the right things every day and to 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 score goals so it's it's always good so are you gonna all meet up over christmas time or something um i don't know i think joe's got an away game so yeah i was gonna I'll be seeing him um and obviously we have to travel on christmas day so i'll be i think half of the family split in newcastle and half of the family be split in london so Okay, well, that's the way it goes, I guess, mate. Um, um, Dave B asks, uh, after playing abroad with Benfica already, does playing abroad once more uh, someday in the future perhaps remain an ambition? Um, Of course. I feel like I've done it when I was um, young, so I've got a lot of experience um, living away from home now. Um, So... Of course, one day I would love to play abroad again, but um, we never know what the future holds. And um, as I said, I'm on a journey. You are. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. We'll see where that journey takes me. Um, your, uh, Dave B also says that your goal against Middlesbrough, we're coming back to that again, uh, was similar to the one that was scored in the past by Adal Tabat. Uh, and he asked, what was it like to train with him at Benfica? Uh, it was good. Of course, he taught me a lot of things. Uh, uh, he's a top, top player. That obviously <laughs> any QPR fan or player knows about him. So <laughs> don't need to say too much about him. You know how good he was. But yeah, it was really good. I feel like um, he helped me a lot, not just on the pitch, but um, obviously going there. And a lot of the people, you know, he's lived in London, so he could kind of like relate to me a bit more. So 
it was good to to see someone that's been you know lived in London a lot and someone that's older that can give you experiences. So yeah, I'm really grateful for him being there at that time. That can yeah, it was good timing. Him, yeah. Um, Dave B finally asked, uh, you've played out wide as a number 10 and up front at QPR. Which do you feel is your best position? Um, I wouldn't really say I'm a number nine, number nine like that. So I'll <laughs> no, say, no. <laughs> well, I wouldn't really say I'm out on that winger. So I would like to say number 10 maybe. Um, but I do like coming off the left. So I would, I would say... Yeah, number 10 on the left. Okay, that's that's good. That's good. Um, and Ash QPR asks, increasingly it seems that the team are becoming reliant on you as a, as their star player. Uh, does that play on your mind much? Um, I wouldn't say the teams rely on me at the end of the day, you know. I feel like, right answer. <laughs> I feel like one day football, it's never about one player and it's even... I thought that even if you look back, um, it's never about one player at the end of the day. Um, one player can't win the game. Um, if you play 1v11, I'm sure the 11 will win. So um, it's never about me. We've got top players here. We've got very good players. And I feel like it's a team thing. And um, we keep pushing in the right way and keep um, playing to our strengths. Then I think we'll keep on winning and we can do good things this season. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it really is down to mindset and the way the team set up exactly. as a team, not as an individual. OK, now some quick fire questions from me, Chris, if, that need quick answers. So are you ready? Mm. <laughs> I'm very hesitant. Um, as the middle child with Matty, the eldest and Joe, the youngest, did you feel that you were sometimes overlooked growing up? Um, no. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. <laughs> Did you feel that you were always in competition with your brothers, though? Um, I would never say. I wouldn't say competition. I feel like people yeah. kind of like um, looked us up, looked at, looked at us as the same. That's one thing I noticed. Um, as a package. Yeah, as a package. So a lot of things. I think if I'm playing on the left, or they'll um, automatically assume that. Joe plays on the left, or Matt plays on the left, or ah, that's yeah. your, if he, your brother can do that, why can't you do that? And, <laughs> and at the end of the day, we're different people, and if you look now, we're, we can play, we play completely different in every single way. Um, so that was quite hard. But yeah, finally, finally you got your own identity. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in a race across the pitch, who would be the fastest, you, Matty, or Joe? Uh, I'll say Joe. <laughs> Oh really? Okay, all right. Yeah, especially look, uh, look across the pitch. Yeah, across the pitch. He's quite fast, to be fair to him. <laughs> so I'll give him that one. All right. Uh, do you check any other teams' results on the Sunday morning? And if so, which ones and why? Um, to be fair, I check all the results. I'm a big football fan, so I love football anyway. So if I don't um, check the results, I I seem to find myself on YouTube watching the highlights of all the games. Um, not just Premier League, but Championship as well. Um, Good. Uh, okay, which pleases you the most? A goal as a result of fantastic dribbling or a long-range, perfectly placed shot? Uh, dribbling. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I thought you'd say that. I, I, when it comes to goals of the month, I always favour those as well. Okay. Uh, do you devote any extra training time to practicing long range shooting? Um, a little bit. I feel like, you know, here we have training sessions where we do um, things after the session or sometimes in the session. But it could be a mixture of shooting. It's not just long range shooting. Okay. Range shooting. No. Um, why do you not take corners or free kicks? I'm not actually sure. Obviously, we got Ilias. <laughs> uh, Ilias is very good at taking corners um, and free kicks. So it's not. It's a thing where I do want to take them. It's not like I'm shying away and I'm not saying in my career I'm never gonna take the responsibility. But um, I would love to do it. Um, but at the moment, it's just 
you know, my friend Elias is on them, so and he's very good at them. So yeah, and Kenneth as well. Exactly, Kenneth, Kenneth as well. Um, but it's something that I want to, you know, if you want to be a top player, you have to take the responsibility on uh, exactly. And when that comes at the right time, I'll do that. And I feel like practice makes perfect. So I think I need to practice a bit more, but I feel like I have it in my capability to do it. Yeah, it makes sense. It's adding to your repertoire, isn't it? So that that's good. Um, Paul, if Paul Morris is listening, perhaps he'll have a word with Neil Critchley for you. <laughs> <laughs> so what um hobbies do you have outside of football and why them um to be honest i wouldn't really say i know i'm gonna sound a bit boring now <laughs> but i wouldn't really say i have any really other hobbies uh, um i like to do like different stuff um for so example, you're more just a homeboy? Yeah, I, I like to sit at home, to be fair. <laughs> I know it sounds like a cliche, but... No, no, no. I, 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 I can understand I that. Like to, I do like to chill at home. Um, I do like to go out to for dinner. But other hobbies, I don't really really have any other hobbies. Um, I like to relax. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, you're of uh, Montessorian descent, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, so do you have any relatives still there and are they proud supporters of you? Um, yeah, I have um, family still in Montserrat. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's... Um, God, Montserrat, yeah. Yeah, quite, yeah, it's quite a small island. Um, I'm not sure that, um, how many people live on the island now, but it's not it's not many people. Um, my grandparents were both born there. Um, so, yeah, I'm really proud, obviously, to be from there. Uh, it's a small, small island, so hopefully one day I can go back there and obviously try to, you know, Good. build something or give back. Um, give that would be neat. Now that would be that would be excellent. Which I suppose ties in a way with what I, my next question: When your playing career finally ends, what do you think you will do instead? Um, I've always kind of had a dream to like um, help young players. Um, I'm a big believer in God as well, so I know. I'd like to help um young players um help young players develop in a way, not just football, but just in the mental side of the game. Because I know how hard it could be. Um injuries, rejections, heartbreak and all these things. And I'm I i want to help. Um hopefully I have the opportunity to do that. That would be neat. No, I think that'd be a really good thing to do, Chris. Um so other side of you now how competitive are you really um come on be honest no oh, i am quite competitive so <laughs> i do want to be the best <laughs> hey <laughs> nothing wrong with that <laughs> exactly i feel like every top if you want to be a top player that's what you have to be um of course i want to score every game i want to be the best player on the pitch every game but i feel like Obviously, sometimes it doesn't happen, and that's just football, for example. But I feel like it's about learning, and and when you're in your moments, you take their moments. And yeah, I agree. Day, you, you never know what could happen, especially in football. I feel like if you're confident, and for me, if I play free, I can do a lot of things. Um. So yeah. Okay, my my final one for you is um. How will you celebrate Christmas with a game at Cardiff the next day? Um, well, my sister's going to come to my apartment. Um, so I think Matty will be there. And um, yeah, my nephew. So we'll probably have early Christmas dinner. And then um, I'll head to to see the lads. on the. Well, we have to meet here at the training ground. So we'll head up to Cardiff. So... I'm sure it won't be too bad to end it with your <laughs> your teammates on the bus. Probably have some some jokes, maybe play some card games and stuff. So it'll be okay. <laughs> I know it's part of football. A lot of teams um have to do it as well. So and we're we're um, we're blessed. So I'm I'm sure like one day is not really gonna you know hurt us too much. Now, especially if you win. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, many thanks, Chris, for agreeing to be on the podcast. Uh, it really is much appreciated. I've been trying to set this up for months, and I'm delighted to have you finally here today. Um, and it only rain remains for me to wish the club, the players, and all our fans a Merry Christmas and a top six New Year. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Take care, Chris. Merry Christmas. We know who we are. You know who we are. We are QPR.